Welcome to Chalk Talk, presented by Option Central, the premier source for all things option football. Now sit back and get your pencil and paper ready for some option football education with another Chalk Talk from Option Central. Hi, this is Tony DeMeo, and today our guest is Manny Matsakis. And Manny and I go way back, and uh, he's a wealth of football knowledge, and he's going to share some of it with us today. Manny, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Tony. It's uh, nice to be on your uh, broadcast here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, first off, uh, I really consider you one of the better offensive coaches in, in the country. Uh, you're a guy that uh, is very innovative, very creative, and, and created a system that, that is unique and gives you a tremendous advantage regardless of where you coach, whether it be at Wyoming, whether it be at Widener, wherever you've been, you've always moved the ball. What's your overall philosophy of offensive football? Well, Tony, I, I would say this, you know, as I've been able to create this offensive system, I call it the triple shoot, and uh, what my philosophy is to create uh, advantages for our offense through utilizing uh, alignments, uh, receiver splits, uh, you know, I, I try to work on, it's an interesting concept, I, I think there's basically four things. There's matter, energy, space, and time. So I'm trying to give myself an advantage in those ways. So if you look at the matter side is the way we put personnel, offensive line wise, certain types of people, body types, so we can get, we were heavy on double teams in the system, you know, and then, and then the energy is created through the speed at which we run, like today we'll talk about jet sweep, and then uh, you look at spacing on the field and, ju and just the timing of things that is a little bit different than uh, what, were people, what people were doing before. What, where, did, uh, where did this philosophy come from, number one? Number two, who are your three major influences in football that helped you form this philosophy? Well, you know, it, I think it came from, <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, you know, uh, growing up, in, in, and go, when I went to college at Capital University, I studied physics and biology. Right? So I was always a system-oriented learner. And when I was studying physics, that's where a lot of this stuff came from. You know, you just sort of see how physical matter works in the world. And it's like I get on the field and I just, all I see is those things. And, and a lot of these other distractions aren't there for me. So, you know, matter, energy, space, and time is where it sort of works out for me. And then as far as the influence is like I have a I I've, I've always had a filter on for for concepts that are built with that in mind. And initially I I was very fortunate. I was working on my doctorate and I I spent a lot a lot of time with a then retired uh, coach uh, Tiger Ellison uh, who had started the run and shoot offense in Middletown, right. Ohio. Yeah. I read his book, Tiger Ellison, uh, The Now Offense, Run and That's Shoot. That's right. Yeah, so we spent a, a solid week together in Center City, Florida, where he was retired, and, and, I, and I wrote a lot about that, and we had gone over the old, he used to call them celluloid films, you know, and uh, they, they were before what most people, the older guys even know as film. I mean, they were tiny, and he gave me a bunch of the film. I was studying it, and I saw what he was doing. So I, I think he was a big influence for me. Um, another guy is that because I was heavy in the run and shoot, but then I started looking at more uh, triple option type things because I like the way that they use basically the spacing and matter, like how you could get the veer blocks and all that. I, I really like that. So I, at that point, a good friend of mine who's since passed away, Ben Griffith, he was at uh, Georgia Southern. He signed uh, Tracy Ham. And uh, Paul Johnson was his GA, and, um, and and he had started to morph his system from a triple option type thing into a triple option run and shoot type system, and uh, he, you know, so so Ben was a big influence for me as well, and then um, and then my third one is a guy that's not even alive anymore. He was he's never alive when I was coaching. Uh, a guy named Dutch Meyer. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, TCU? What's he, that? Was he a TCU? Yeah, yeah, he was a TCU. And uh, the interesting thing about this is I was recruiting uh, in Long Island, and, and they had been running my offense at Freeport High School since I was at Hofstra. And uh, the head football coach there, Russ Sellen, said, hey, I was couldn't wait to see you. They were throwing this book away in the library, and it was by Dutch Meyer called Spread Formation Football. And he goes, I looked at the pages, and I said, um, well, you know, Manny would want, want to have this. So he gave it to me as a gift. And I was at Emporia State at the time, and it was after my first season. It was that after the first season where, if you remember, Tony, we were a, a pure run-and-shoot team my first right. season. And then I read the book, and I've been studying all this stuff. So that spring, I had seen a series of photos of Dutch Meyer, uh, his teams at TCU, and they were in the shotgun, and they were running – what looked like at that point a jet sweep, and um, you know the great quarterback uh, Sammy Ball was, was was the photos of him, and and he would take the shotgun snap, and the way he would do is that he would turn around and ride a jet sweep, and and you know back in those days in the books they had like sequential photos of bam 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 they'd shoot it across, and then I just woke up right before spring ball started I said you know what what if I put this guy under the center, the quarterback? What if I bring this guy across? And then what if I have this little running back who was pretty good in the run and shoot? I mean, he rushed for a little, about 1,000 yards as a freshman. And uh, I start to develop what I called my belly series at the time because belly to me meant the quarterback revert. He turned, you know, he reversed around yeah. like uh, Bill Manlove, you know, wrote that great book. Yep, yep. Bill Manlove, a great oh. football coach. Yeah, he actually was here at Widener. And um, so I, 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 that was my concept. Oh, well, that's belly because we're reversing. And then I started putting the Dutch Meyer concepts and that together with the, the hand bone triple option splits and all these different things. And then I it created what I called my accordion splits where we, and I think you call them smart splits. Right. You? And uh, where, where we would cut the shade, widen the three, and, and, and very different things, and we started to create spacing that way. And then you remember, I mean, Brian Shea rushed for almost 7,000 yards. I don't, want to, I don't want to remember Brian Shea, but go ahead. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, although you had some great offenses there, and we had some shootouts. I mean, it, it, and I don't want to – I'll bring it up, but I don't think any running back against one opponent – in four years, he rushed for over a thousand yards, Tony, right. against Washburn, and that's to me. I've never had a kid do that, and but it, and as great as he as he was as a player, I believe that the system itself helped him really flourish and, and, and do some good things. Absolutely, and the thing about Brian Shea was he was such a breakaway threat. And uh, the, the other guy that I, I, you had uh, two really good slots, Publish and uh, and Vito, that were oh, yeah. hard to handle. So the problem was you had so many different weapons available that if you did concentrate on Shea, the others would kill you anyway. So you know it was like pick your poison. It was a really good system. The the thing I the thing that uh, now hold on, Tony. There's one interesting point I want to make on that. And, and it's like, you're right, and I can remember when our friend Willie Fritz, remember he was at Central yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, Willie Fritz has gone on, and I think he's at Tulane now. But, um, you know, you were totally undermanned and took him offensively to the woodshed every, when you would play him. And, I, and, we, and he struggled with the things we were doing. And, and it's funny, Brian's senior year, is crazy. It was wild. We would just run anything but give Brian the ball the whole first half. And ESPN was there. It was the day Brian wrote, broke the all-time record for rushing in college football history at the time. And he had maybe 20 yards the first half. In the second half, he rushed for over 300 yards. You know, be, because they started to focus on this on veto and publish, and, and it was it was a really you know, I think you're right, Tony. The key is if you've got a, it's a system, and if you've got more than just 
a feature guy, which I've always struggled with. Even though I was with Leach, you know, with the air raid, if his quarterback isn't playing well, he's done. You know, and I, I think if, if you've got a system, you got a better shot to. Well, let's uh, let's look at your jet sweep. I see uh, we have a, a one on the screen ready to go. Why don't you yeah. why don't you take us through this play, uh, show it to us in regular speed, and then take us back and explain exactly how you're running the jet sweep. Okay, now this first one, and, there, and some of these are two by two, and some of them, like in this case here, is an unbalanced formation. I right? love unbalanced, by the way. I use all kinds of unbalanced. Okay, so you'll see this one, because we're taking basically our X receiver, getting him off the line, uh, working one of these guys up, and then we're hitting the edge here like this. But the big thing is, lo notice the offensive line is compressed to the play right. side. Okay, so we're trying to get an alley right here. All right, that's what we're working on here, and we'll take the outside receiver wider, and always bottom of the numbers. And now, you know, I've spent some time with Art Bryles, and he gets his guys really wide. We'll take this guy way over by there where the official is, get him out here really wide, open up the lane, and create this big space in here. Now, it doesn't mean you have to run the jet sweep because there's a whole, you know, there's five plays we have off of this series. But that's how it starts off. And then we get our receiver, you know, here he is. We'll bring him in motion. Boom, hit it. Freeze it right there. Okay. Now. Okay. Freeze it right there. Okay. Now here's an interesting thing. One of the things about the jet sweep triple option is you don't have to block those big guys. No. And, th and that's a big, see, this is like an equalizer offense. So when you're at Hofstra playing New Hampshire, this gave you a chance. The triple option gives you a chance against the, the big teams. You know, it's the, the David and Goliath story. Yeah. The jet sweep is a slingshot. You know, I, the triple option is a slingshot. This is a great picture because it shows how many unblocked guys you have here, but you're playing the game out on the edge where you're making, I always say, I want to make cover guys tackle and tackle guys cover. So You're right. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, it's funny when you, when you say that because, like, when I get an offensive line coach that isn't indoctrinated into this stuff, you know, and we show them the jet, and and it's like, uh, well, how am I going to block this guy? That guy? I go, look, the speed of the receiver. If he hits top speed when he gets into the tackle box, all right. All I want your lineman to do is take a step and get linebacker secondary level and, and they don't believe me it, it, it's like I say look if we don't even have five guys one day I said don't even put any linemen up there hit this thing fast enough take these guys off the ball and if the guy can hit it take the snap and bow around a little bit he'll still beat the end if you run it fast enough because we've compressed through the accordion splits we've given ourselves a chance to get out in space now what is the tailback your dive back do. He fakes the dive, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So let's All right. Go, go back from the very beginning of the end zone and take us through. Let's start with the uh, the right tackle. Now okay. his job is to get to that linebacker. Is that correct? Yeah, he's taking that, taking that uh, no bucket step. He's angle step at 45 degrees and, and just sort of pin that guy a little bit, but then get up and get that linebacker. And they're all doing that. If they get caught in a double team for a second, that's fine. They can cut him, or you know, the, we're allowed to cut, obviously. And then, and then just keep going. You know, keep moving. Linebacker, secondary level. Just chip off of anybody that gets in your way. I look at it like a uh, a wall return on a punt. You yeah. know, you know, that's that's what we're telling them. That you're the wall. Boom, hit it. Go get it. And then the super back himself. What we do is. Um, in this case here, when the quarterback gets the ball, he's actually reach, he, he's taking his left foot to the jet sweep receiver. Uh, he's, he rides him, and if we had called the dive, he's actually coming off the midline, so this can, can hit right over the spine of the center if we chose to do that. And sometimes you watch this, it's like, oh, had we given it to him, boom, this thing, a lot of times a bend back and it goes out the gate. Okay.
So now you want to, here's a two by two. They're coming here. You're, you're going to see these guys basically a flying wedge. I mean, they're, they're going pop return, right? The, generally, we take this and this. Now, sometimes what we'll also do is we give these guys the option to X block it, all right, because that sets up a play pass, all right, if we want to wheel it or something. So right. switch that up often between these guys so we're not always doing the same thing. But I let, I honestly, I just get, let them do it. Say, hey, you guys make your own call, you know, exit. Or, or, or stock it, and then we bring the receiver across, and here we go. Yeah, once he turns that corner, that's trouble. And, and here's another point with us. Why, now, understand, nowadays I am probably 70% uh, in the gun, but I still go under the center for a variety of reasons, and one of which you can see here. Like, from under the center, you remember the old run-and-shoot hot passes? Yeah, the guys uncovered. You know, a, a lot of times today, these um, these outside uh, linebackers here, you know, strong safety, nickel backs, as you call these guys here. You know, they're so geared into being able to play between the front and the. They're trying to play both the front and the coverage. Well, there's times where we'll get under the center, and if this guy's a little wider over here, that we just pull up and throw him the ball because he's not even covered. And they're, they're just not coached like they used to be to get out and cover receivers. They think they can play, they can play both. And I, and I think there is an advantage to sometimes being under the center because of defenses. I don't think they're as disciplined today. They're not. They're not. Um, so here, here's, a, here's a shot of it here coming our way. And, it, you know, the thing, if you notice on, on Manny's film, is that uh, they're, they're, these are not killer blocks. No, no, we don't they're have They're not that. killer blocks. And the other thing is, that look at from the end zone, this tackle, your, your, your right tackle, the, the tackle to the left of us, he, I mean, they have the edge right off the bat. Yeah. You can see that. What, this is a great shot, Manny. Go back one more time. This is a great shot of the reach, trip and run idea or the or the angle steps that you're talking about because they don't actually have to overpower anybody. No. Mm -mm. Understand, in that offensive line you see there, you're t we had four freshmen on that offensive line right out of high school. <laughs> so, so it gives you a chance, and we had the number one offense in the conference. You know, so that gives you a, a pretty good idea. Here's a, one of the one of the last clips we talked. We want to talk about another shot at the unbalanced look. All right, now we're compressing some things up at the top. You notice I don't have him as wide, all right, because we're looking to, as you'll see here, boom, to get really wide. See, we we preset that this thing was going to go wide by bringing the outside receiver a little tighter. Right, and you crack, 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 and then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's excellent. That's this is great stuff. And, and and you know the whole concept is you know I always enjoy great triple option teams because the receivers can get downfield and be very physical and take it out on those defensive backs. And um, I I I think that's what I get out of this the same way because we want to take pride in blocking downfield, um, you know, because those guys are athletic and they can do things that the big old linemen can't. I mean, we can draw up stuff, but right. it's rarely for the old line do I see them actually, I don't care what the scheme is, you draw up, hey, we're going to run counter or something. Well, they don't ever block the right guys because they're not athletic enough. These right. receivers can actually execute what you draw up and I, it gives you that opportunity to have success. All right, now watch this, okay? I call this my accelerator technique, okay? All right, now we're right here. We're the team in, uh, can you see this okay? This The yep. team in blue, right? I right, see this guy over here? Yeah. 15 yards off the ball. Keep an eye on him.
That's really neat. Yeah, and you see it here too. And and, and this is a, a basically when I was the offense corner at Winnipeg, I created a way to do this, and we actually set the all-time record in the Canadian Football League for rushing in a game up there. But um, that gives you one concept, right? When you watch a magician, they have a certain sleight of hand. You know, you're you're paying attention to something, and something else that you're not noticing is happening. Thus the magic trick, right? So watch this play, all right? Because the whole defense is worried about what, the accelerator, right? All right? You see him back here, right? Yep. He's way back here. All right? and, and, uh, and one reason I do the accelerator is because I can hit super tops at the highest possible speed when the quarterback has the ball here. I can hit it at top speed all right? because if I'm on the hash, for me to hit top speed, I got to start him on the track. Yeah. I don't have enough room, okay? So that's why initially I started doing this. So I bring the accelerator from back here about 15 yards when the QB is at four and a half in the gun. All right, now watch what happens here. Keep your eyes on the accelerator for a second, okay? Because that's what the magic trick is, right? Wow, that's great. Yeah. So now you're running the counter off of this, and it's really oh, awesome. Oh, they didn't see him. Run it back again. That was great. Yeah, you'll see it here, and I think there might even be two clips of it. You'll see another clip of this. And the stat I'm about to tell you is what astounded Leach. Right, we'll see the next one here. Accelerator's back. See him way back on a on the 25-yard line. Yep. Boom, boom. See ya. That's great. All right. So this accelerator concept is something that I've, you know, basically just started this past year. And here's what's wild, Tony, is like I ran this play with an accelerator, and, and I've got a whole series off of this. And when I ran it, uh, ran it 14 times, and we averaged 24 yards per attempt. Didn't matter which play, 24 yards per attempt. So I think I got something that I'm going to keep working on awesome. in the spring. Yeah, I think that's really good. Well, Manny, listen, I, I mean, I could talk to you all day about football, but I know you got things to do, and I know you're recruiting and things like that. Um, do you uh, t Tell us a little bit about your – your website and where people can get into and and uh, get access to uh, a wealth of football knowledge. Well, I appreciate it. This is um, my website, you know, MannyMatsakis.com. What you see here is my way of doing something like this because it was this summer, you know, I, I was going through, I was digitizing all my files. I still had like playbooks and old napkins from when I was at Hofstra in the early 90s. So I started looking at it, and I had boxes, and I can't imagine the many, how many boxes you've got, Tony, but it, it would fill my office. I, I said, I can't do this. So I started categorizing them on what I would Evernote, which is a program that you can digitize things. And then I started noticing there was a common pattern in all this. I said, you know what, I want to share this with coaches. So I started this website. Last summer, I wrote a bunch of posts and didn't start until like September. And so on this site, you'll see it's like it's it's I, I like for people to opt in and give me their email address because I can give them more insight. And I know you you've done that yourself, Tony. And and what it is I'm on your website, I go yeah. on your website all the time. Yeah. So so I mean, one I've got a, a deal here on you know they get a free report on how to optimize their practice, but. And then I, I, I'm breaking it up into X's and O's, personal development, leadership, and productivity, and influence are just cool quotes I have, you know, uh, from different people. A lot of time they're Greek, you know, Plato, you know, those kind of guys. But so, so this website is designed to help coaches that, uh, you know, t to really take their career where they want to go. And I and I put a lot of resources into this over the years and, and you know I blog regularly on it and uh, just trying to help guys out more than anything else because I do surveys once in a while and see 
you know, what do you want to, what do you want to have access to? Because there's just so much information. And um, you know, this is my way to give back to coaches. And uh, you know, anybody wants to sign up, doesn't cost anything. Just get in and and get a bunch of great stuff. One of the things I like about uh, your career is how you've taken. Uh, there's been so many people that you've gotten information from and woven into a Manny Matsakis philosophy. Uh, I appreciate it. I, and hey, we're as good as the people we associate with. And I'm, you know, from Bill Snyder to Tony DeMeo, I'm, I'm a fortunate guy, you know. Hey, that's nice of you to say. Well, listen, uh, thanks for your time. And uh, if, if, uh, if I can tell you one thing, uh, if you need to know something about football, Manny Matsakis is a great resource. Thanks again, Tony, and uh, we'll be talking as we always do. Take care, buddy. All right, bye-bye. You've been watching Chalk Talk. Chalk Talks are a production of Option Central, the premier site for all things option football. Ready to improve your option football coaching skills? It's time to join OptionCentral.net right now.